Effective crude oil washing is an essential part of every efficient crude oil discharge. It is mandatory under international conventions such as MARPOL. But effective crude oil washing, or cow, is good for everyone. It is good commercially, as it can increase cargo outturn. It also reduces the amount of oil retained on board. So the ship sails with minimal residues and cleaner okay, tanks. By, then, this makes it easier to inspect the tanks and reduces the need for expensive tank cleaning and desludging when preparing for dry dock. This training package is intended to broaden and emphasize your own training and the material in your ship's cow manual. Complete knowledge and understanding of this manual is vital to all deck officers on tankers. We're going to look at both the equipment and operational procedures of crude oil washing. Let's first look at the different types of crude oil washing machine. There are two types. The single nozzle programmable and the non-programmable twin nozzle types. Single nozzle programmable machines can be set to wash specific areas of the tank. To save time, the upper parts of the tank can be washed during the bulk discharge. A typical initial wash pattern might wash from 140 degrees to 30 degrees. As most residues are on the bottom, the bottom wash might include two cycles. One washing from 60 degrees to zero and one from 30 degrees to zero. After the first cycle, sounding should be made to determine the effectiveness of the cow, the residue present and whether a second bottom wash is needed. With double hulled ships, top washes may not be needed on every discharge. These programmable machines need to be programmed for every wash. Typically, they have a throughput of between 110 and 170 tons per hour. The twin nozzle machines are not programmable. They always carry out a complete cycle in a specific time. The cycle time will depend on the correct line pressure. During bottom washing, it is essential that there is no liquid buildup, as even 20 centimeters of oil will protect the residue from the jet action of the cow machines. Crude oil washing machines are driven by the oil from the cargo pumps acting on an impeller. So for the washing to be effective, the oil pressure must be correct. If it's not correct, the oil will not be hitting the sludge with the right amount of energy. And neither the jet length nor the cycle time will be up to specification. The result will be ineffective and prolonged washing. The penalties include increased discharge time and increased oil remaining on board. The washing machines are fitted according to the individual tank's shadow diagram and the MARPOL requirements. The equipment is always tested before certification. Crude oil washing is all about getting as much oil ashore as possible. So about half the discharge time is spent bulk discharging the cargo and about half crude oil washing and stripping. Eductors are the preferred way of stripping. They have no moving parts, but require a good supply of cargo at the correct pressure. 
stripping pumps and vac strip systems are also commonly used. Check your manuals to see the equipment fitted to your ship. Crude oil washing is only possible with inert tank atmospheres. So this makes the inert gas system another component of the cow system. The inert gas system is dealt with in a companion training package. The final component is the right crude oil. Some heavy crudes are designated unsuitable for cow by the IMO because they are very viscous. Check your ship's cow operations manual for details. Low temperatures can pose the risk of crude oil solidifying in the supply lines. It may need to be heated. The temperature of oil used for cow must be at least 10 degrees Celsius above its cloud point. Again, check your cow operation manual for more information. This manual is a mandatory requirement for every tanker. It will contain the basis for the cow plan, itself the basis for the cow operation. The vessel requirements and charterer's instructions are also essential in planning crude oil washing. You must always be certain that your cow plan meets your charter party obligations. Any doubts should be clarified between the master and the charterer before the planning of the discharge and crude oil washing. What I propose then, uh, two is a due crude oil washing for uh, MARPOL requirements and uh, additionally I would suggest we carried out a bottom wash uh, for this grade to maximise outturn. I can't see there being any problems with that. Uh, I'll investigate with the agent just in case. Okay, then well I'll uh, plan accordingly then. The washing plan is an integral part of the discharge plan. Calculation of stress, trim and draft is essential for every hour of the discharge. Careful thought is required particularly if there is more than one crude on board or more than one discharge port. You must not just reuse old plans unless the discharging circumstances are identical. Different crudes will contain different amounts of wax and sediment. The more wax, the more washing they will require. If a slop tank is being used as a reservoir for cow, it must be recharged from time to time to keep the crude oil fresh and not saturated with wax. Overwashing using light crudes should be avoided as it means loss of some of the higher fractions. Time will be a crucial factor. That's why it's essential to know the cycle times of the washing machines to allow sufficient time. Allowance must be made for cargo pump capacity for washing and final stripping. The trim will affect the crude oil washing. The International Safety Guide for Oil Tankers and Terminals recommends the use of a bar chart showing pump and cargo lines being used, including car requirements. This will help ensure that the right equipment and cargo is available for washing. The plan must always take into account that the ship will need to dry dock. Additional washing during the last few discharges before dry dock will reduce the residues down to the minimum and avoid delays and the high costs of manual desludging. Once the master has approved the plan, the watch keeping officers need to sign it. All officers involved in the discharge must have access to the plan. They should be encouraged to ask questions to ensure that they understand what needs to be done 
and when. And, and it's a full bottom wash and all yeah. that. Yeah, we're doing that to maximise the outturn with this particular grade as it's slightly heavier than usual. Any other questions at all? No, that's it. That's fine. The plan is the basis for the car operation. The terminal staff will need to approve it. Surveyors and inspectors may need to examine it. The car operation begins on the day before birthing. Your manuals will have a full car checklist that you must keep to. Hello Deck, that's us uh, just about to start the cargo pump to uh, test the cow line. The cow lines must be pressure tested to normal working pressure. This can be done by recirculating cargo. But the pressure needs to be increased slowly to reduce the risk of hydraulic shock at the end of the lines. Hello Deck, pump's running, just going to start increasing. We've got about uh, four bar on the cow line now. Okay, there's no sign of any leak so far. Okay, just gradually bringing the pump up now. There must be a thorough inspection for leakage and any leaks must be repaired. A record must be kept of the tests. Okay, Derek, that's us up to the 10 bar now. Can you just have a good look round, please? Yeah, there doesn't seem to be any signs of any leaks over on deck. Okay, copy that. All pressure gauges must be checked. This will include the gauges on the top discharge line, the manifold and the main tank washing line. The washing lines must be isolated from the heating arrangements and any hydrant valves on the washing line must be blanked. The stripping arrangements need to be checked. Last but not least, the inert gas system should be checked and prepared as specified in the ship's IG manuals. Okay, Deck, thanks very much. All these tests and checks need to be recorded in the log for presentation to the terminal staff. Once alongside, the cowl plan and the discharge plan must be scrutinized and approved by the terminal staff. The time must be taken by both sides to ensure that everyone is certain that everything is in order. In addition to these plans, there are many issues that need to be agreed with shore staff. These will include details of terminal regulation, details of communication between the ship and the terminal, and emergency shutdown procedures. The uh, pumps are now settled at 1200 revs there, Gary, if you want to come up uh, while we do the line displacement. Once discharge begins, the cow plan becomes active. To reduce the risk of electrostatic discharge inside the tanks during cow, any tank that is being used as a source for washing oil must be partially discharged by at least one meter. This ensures that any water that has settled out will not be used for cow. If the slop tank is being used as a reservoir, it must be completely emptied and refilled. Care must be taken not to overpressurize or overfill the slop tank during backfilling. Before washing starts in any tank, the oxygen content of the tank atmosphere must be checked to be certain that it's below the specified maximum. This means checking at several levels in the tank. Hello Phil, can you stand by on the cow machines on the slop tank please? Uh, we're going to start cowing in a moment. Okay. Once discharge is underway, and once the tank to be used as a reservoir for the cow has been filled with dry oil, then at the appropriate time set out in the plan, the washing operation is started. Immediately all the lines must be checked again for leaks by a crew member. 
While crude oil washing is underway, there should be at least one responsible person on the deck at all times, supervising and monitoring the procedure. Regular inspections must be made, including checking that machines are fully operational and that the cycle times are correct. Check that the machines are washing in the right tanks. Always take the time to check on each machine. You can tell a lot by listening to them. You should be able to hear the jet moving across the tank bulkhead. Always keep an eye on the cowl line pressure. Correct pressure is the key to effective washing. Pressure in the tanks is important too. Make sure that vapor pressure does not build up during washing. This can lead to unplanned venting to atmosphere, which may be illegal in the terminal. Hot sunny days can have the same effect. The plan must be kept to at all times. If things start to go wrong, the chief officer must be notified immediately. Better to call him sooner rather than later if you are in any doubt. Always check that the inert gas system is operating correctly with an oxygen content below 5% or below 8% for older ships and enough pressure to maintain an excess pressure of 100 millimeters water gauge in the tanks. If the oxygen level increases, the discharge may have to be stopped, and with that, the cow. If ballasting is being carried out in a non-segregated ballast tank ship, at the same time as cargo discharge and cow, then there must be strict supervision. This is because of the increased risk of over or under pressurization and the risk of cross-contamination between cargo and ballast lines. The most important part of the crude oil washing program is the bottom washing. The trim becomes of vital importance for the final stages of bottom washing. Hello Dave, that's the uh, branch on five shut. The machine should be stopped now. You can dip the tank please. The bottom wash is monitored using a dipping rod or by remote gauging. The dipping rod must be used at the aft end of the tank. It's important to avoid excessive build-up on the bottom as this will reduce the efficiency of the washing process. The recommended tank draining method must be followed. After washing has finished, each tank must be stripped again. After time has been allowed for cargo to drain aft to the stripping suction. Two centimetres in five starboard, thank you. Yeah, we'll just keep it ducted there for a moment, Gary. Okay, just sweep the pump of the cabin. When washing has stopped, the valve to each washing machine must be closed. That's the crude oil washing complete, if you can slow the pump down. To Once the cargo operation is complete, all main lines and stripping lines, pumps and cow lines must be drained as quickly as possible. This is very important if the crude oil has been heated. Hello Dave, that's the uh, crude oil washing complete. We've shut the branch into the cow system. If you can go and open the machine uh, forward in one port and aft in the slop tanks please to drain the system down. To speed this up, open one forward washing machine and one machine in the slop tank so that all the cargo in the cow line drains into the slop tank. Final tank and line draining is done with a stripping pump connected to the shore using a small line called the Marpole line. 
Crude oil washing is an important part of crude oil discharge. Effective crude oil washing increases cargo outturns, reduces the amount of sludge buildup, and reduces the risk of pollution. Effective maintenance of the washing machines is important. Cow machines are not fit and forget. Make sure you maintain them according to the manufacturer's standards. Eductors need attention too. Check the time taken to strip a set quantity of liquid from a cargo tank. Loss in performance usually means that the eductor nozzle is worn and must be replaced. Most of all, regular inspection of the tanks will tell you how well the cow machines are operating. Any build-up of residue should be noted and investigated. Keep to the procedures described in your ship's manual. Always make sure that the plan fulfills charter party requirements and that this is recorded in the log. For further information, refer to the IMO publication, Crude Oil Washing Systems. Always remember that the right pressure is essential for effective crude oil washing machine and eductor operation. Above all, the basis for an efficient operation is a good discharge and cow plan. Coupled with consistent monitoring of every stage of the plan throughout the entire operation. Okay, Gary, thanks very much. If you stand by there, please. With good training, experience and careful planning, ship's officers will be able to carry out safe and effective crude oil washing operations. In doing so, they will benefit everyone involved in the transportation of crude oil. <laughs>